All right, we will get started. Thanks again for coming. If anyone else joins us, we will, uh, hopefully they can just jump right in. Uh, today's senior session is on understanding your financial aid award letter. And um, I've subtitled it, it kind of, or titled it at the top, the struggle is real, right? Th these can be really, really confusing. Um, so hopefully this helps understand, uh, help you understand a little bit better uh, what the, um, letters can look like, what information they have on there, how to sort through it all, and so on. And again, if you have questions, um, please put them in the chat or if you're not able to, to see my screen or something like that. So here we go with a little intro. So who's going to do it? I don't want to do it. Well, I'm not doing it. Can Brick do it? He's just a kid. You can't ask him to do it. OK. I will do it. What's more nerve wracking than getting into college? Opening the financial aid package. Should I do it fast or slow? Fast. No, slow. No, fast. Oh, God, I can't remember the Band-Aid rule. Just open it. Uh... What's it say? What's it say? Uh, I don't know. Is this for one year or four years? Oh, my God, how can I go to college if I can't even figure out the financial aid letter? I see room and board. I see tuition. Yes, they're giving us everything we needed. We're poor! <laughs> We were poor enough. I never stopped believing. You know, if we'd have worked a little bit harder, none of this would be possible. Oh, I just love America so much. So um, again, that's just a little funny kind of intro. Hopefully, you found it funny. Um, but that's the the stress part of it is not understanding what all this stuff means, right? Um, and so, what is the financial aid uh, letter? What is the package that comes? Um, it is uh, the letter is a. a that's something that spells out the details of your financial aid package. And the financial aid package is a collection of different types of financial aid from multiple sources. And we'll take a look at what some of those sources are. It's intended to help you fill the gap between your ability to pay, which is your expected family contribution or EFC. That's what you should get if you've done the FAFSA uh, and the college costs or the cost of attendance. So the college is going to have a cost of attendance. You're going to subtract out what uh, your estimated family contribution is, uh, what you're expected to kind of pay on your own, and then whatever's left after that is your financial need. And the letter will show all the different ways that you can fill that need. And uh, obviously, ideally, it will fill all. It will fill all of your need. But of course, there's going to be instances where it may not, and then that's where we have some decisions to make. So. Financial aid letters, where might you find these letters? Okay, so this is the first part. It's like, I don't know if I got it or not. Um, it could be an actual letter in your mailbox, the old school way where they literally send you a letter. Um, it could be emailed to you as an attachment. So again, hopefully you are uh, reading those emails, especially from schools that you've been admitted to and are checking uh, for those. Uh, more recently, more and more have been put in the portal you might have from that college. So you have to search around your portal. You have to log into your portal, find where it says financial aid information. Um, it might have some of the stuff. It may have all the stuff we're going to look at. This is where it can get a little bit tricky. Sometimes they, the portals don't include the cost of attendance. It just shows you the different types of financial aid. And you're like, great, how much is left or how much do I owe? So you kind of have to do some searching. So those are the unfortunate situations. So again, or all of the above, again, you're probably not going to get it all of the above, but those are all ways that you can find your letter. Uh, they can come within a few weeks after admission. They could come a few months after admission. Um, it really depends on the school. Uh, again, typically, it's only after you've been admitted. A financial aid office is not going to send a, create a financial aid award letter for you if you haven't been admitted. They only do it after the fact. After colleges send you acceptance letters, they'll send you another letter that's just as important, your financial aid award letter. There's no standard format, but they all have the same basic information. Here are four tips on how to read your award letters and figure out which school is offering you the best financial package. Tip number one, understand the cost of attendance. The letter gives you the real cost of attendance or COA. It includes tuition and fees, room and board, books, and even living expenses. You may find the school costs more than you thought. 
Tip number two, figure out how much financial aid you're getting. The letter lists how much financial aid you're being offered, including grants, scholarships, and work study. You don't have to pay back any of these. Work study is a job on campus with pay. You can use that money for living costs. You'll also see your eligibility for federal student loans, which you will have to pay back with interest. Tip number three, do some simple math. Once you've found those key numbers, subtract them from the cost of attendance. The remainder is what you'll have to pay on your own, through private student loans or with other funds. Tip number four, compare your offers. You'll get an award letter from every school that's accepted you and where you've requested financial aid. Comparing them can be tricky. The easiest way is with a simple spreadsheet. Seeing them side by side can be helpful. Or you can use an online calculator. The College Board has one that lets you compare up to four schools. Keep in mind, the school with the highest price may have more money to offer you, so it may actually cost less. You need to do the math for each school. Now that you know how much each school will cost, it's time to decide which one is right for you. Good luck and see you on campus. Okay, so let's take a look at an example. Here's our example student, his uh, bright-eyed young high school senior named Luke Skywalker. Just a little background on Luke. He has been admitted already to three in-state schools, so to speak. Um, he has an EFC of zero. So being a poor farmer, his family is, does not have any money to contribute uh, to college. Now, if your EFC is not zero, if it's higher than zero, um, sort of kind of think, you know, you would prefer to pay zero, right? So the EFC, again, is the money you're going to pay out of your pocket. So in this case, his EFC is zero, but Obviously, you want to get enough financial aid to cover the whole cost of attendance and pay none. So if that makes sense, kind of think of it as EFC equals zero, meaning I'm not going to pay any of my own money for this right now out of my pocket. Um, and he plans to live on campus. So, and, and I apologize if this is a little hard uh, to see. I can share this uh, PowerPoint with, with you all later if you want. But here's the first example of how a letter could look. Now, as the video said, there's no set format, right? So in this case, for Alderaan University, the top of it, and don't try to forget the years because they all look the same, the, the top has um, the estimated cost of attendance. So it comes out to $27,410 a year. So again, the financial aid letter is always per year. All of this is just for your freshman year of college. Each year that you're in college, you're gonna submit the FAFSA again, you're gonna apply for other financial aid and you'll get a letter every year. So this is just for first the year one. <clears throat> so tuition and fees, housing and meals, books, transportation and other educational costs. A couple of things to pick out of here. Number one, tuition and fees and, and housing and meals those are what we call direct costs. If Luke goes to Alderaan University, he's gonna pay for those two things directly to the university. The other three things, books and supplies, transportations and other expense, other costs, those are things that he's gonna probably buy on his own. He's not gonna pay the school for them, but he wants to have that money set aside um, because there's gonna be other expenses. So, um, you can kind of play around with those numbers a little bit. And um, sometimes I, I'll show you an example of that later as well, where again, um, if, if they just put the direct costs and you said, oh yeah, I have that exact amount and forgot about having backup money for other things, you could be in trouble. But however, these are just estimates, you know, transportation. If you get dropped off on campus and stay there until mom or dad picks you up, you know, your transportation cost might be zero. So it just depends on the situation. So hopefully that makes sense. Again, if you have questions, put them in the chat. The, so that's the cost of attendance, 27,410. The next box is grants and scholarships to pay for college. Now this is, as you can, you might not be able to see, but it says gift aid, no repayment needed. The grants and scholarships are free money that you don't have to pay back. So Luke got a grant from the school of 8275. He got the federal Pell Grant, which is need-based because he did the FAFSA. He also got a grant from the state as well. He did not get any other scholarships from the school or he hasn't submitted any other outside ones to the school yet. So his just from the grant from the school and the federal Pell Grant and state grant, he ended up with $18,910 that 
freshman year in free money he doesn't have to pay back. So what's nice about this letter is that before it gets into anything else, it subtracts those two things. And now your net cost, cost of attendance minus the free money, and that's where you would always want to start, is $6,455. Now, if you even subtract out those indirect costs, um, which are about 28, like close to 5,000, you're really only paying the school about 1,500 directly. So not too bad. Um, but again, if you wanna have that extra money for the other costs, then how else can you pay? So the first option they give you is work study. Work study is usually need-based also, and you get a job on campus, but you have to earn the money. So that $2,000 is not gonna be given to you right off the bat. It's just like a job you have to earn it and you can earn up to that amount. So if you only work 20 hours the whole semester, you're probably not gonna make the $2,000. But that money can be used for those indirect costs because it's just like a paycheck. So it's going to your bank account, you can use it for books, transportation, shampoo, whatever else you need. So that's ideal because you work for it, but you get it right then and there and that's, that's it. But some colleges won't put that on the letter because it's uh, something you have to earn. You have to do something for it. The next box is loans, okay? And every student who does the FAFSA is eligible for $5,500 in loans. Um, if you have need base, uh, if you, your family has need, then you could be eligible, eligible for up to $3,500 in the subsidized loan and then $2,000 of unsubsidized. Or if your family doesn't have enough financial need, then it would be 5,500 in unsubsidized loans. And you can um, borrow all 5,500, you can buy a part of it, um, it's, it's up to you. If you're offered both of these loans, you're gonna wanna take the subsidized one first for sure before the unsubsidized one because then the interest doesn't start until after you graduate. So if you were to take the work study and, and work all that and take both loans, you wouldn't have, this student, Luke in this case, would not have to come up with really any other money out of his pocket this year. So it's a zero family contribution. Now, if you just picked up this letter and went straight to the bottom and looked at family contribution zero, you'd be like, sweet, school's free. But again, it's not necessarily because they have factored in here about uh, up to uh, $7,500 in either work study and or loans, which again, is something you have to do to get that money or pay it back later. So again, in this case, if this was you or Luke in this case, he can decide I've got the 6455, I don't need work study or loans, I'm just gonna pay it for that year. And again, um, usually you're billed by the semester. So you would divide that in half and then you can even go on payment plans. So you might be able to pay like 650 bucks a month for 10 months. If that's doable, you don't need any loans or anything else. So that's one example. Um, here's an, so now he also was admitted to Coruscant College. Um, and this one, of course, you can see looks different. So you might find letters that look different. So at the top, um, under estimated expenses, same deal, room and tuition and fees, room and board, books, personal expenses, transportation, comes out to $20,000 cost of attendance. In this school, they divide the um, financial aid options into two into semesters. Like I said, usually you pay by the semester. The Alderaan was the whole year, but Coruscant was, um, oops, sorry, was just the semester. So in this case, uh, at Coruscant, he got the federal Pell Grant and MAP Grant, which usually should be the same at every school because um, it's based off the FAFSA numbers. And then he was offered the subsidized and unsubsidized loans, which again, should be the same at every school because it's based on the FAFSA, the federal stuff. But as you can see, also, he did not receive a work study option for some reason. He did not get any other grants or scholarships or anything like that. So his only types of financial aid are the grants, which are the free money, and then the two loans, which he would have to pay back. The third example from Tatooine University um, shows the cost of attendance. Again, same thing, tuition, room and board, books and supplies, other expenses. So they lumped like uh, transportation and personal expenses into one for the total estimated expenses of 24092. And again, EFC zero, 
indirect costs, as you can see, they even note, you know, can change depending on what you do. And then the, the financial aid that they offer, it's all kinds of stuff. Again, federal um, <clears throat> aid, and this is nice because they break it down by semester, but also give you the full year amount. Pell Grant, Illinois Grant, Illinois MAP Grant, even though he's technically, yeah, tattooing Illinois. Um, the R2D2 scholarship he got for 1500 an assistant chancellor's award for $1,000, the Rebel scholarship for 2000 and then those loans are in there. So if you add all that up, again, total aid is 20635 You might think, sweet, I have less than $4,000 know, out of pocket, but again, you're also factoring in 5500 in loans. So how do we sort out like all that stuff? Um, we want to compare the three, and as the video said, you want to use some kind of spreadsheet. Um, and I have one to share with you here through ISAC, the Illinois Student Assistant Commission. Okay, so in this ISAC sheet, you can put all of the um, colleges all in one spot. So if you're trying to compare between three, you can put it in a thing like this, the College Board one, I guess, has um, four that you can comp compare at once. I, I like this version um, myself. So Alderaan tuition and fees was 11,500. Coruscant was 11,150. And Tatooine was 12,710. Room and board at Alderaan was 10,882. At Coruscant, it was only six. 5400 and at Tatooine it was 8632. So right now again these are just the direct costs okay so you could do this without the indirect costs you could just go along um, you know with your other grants and stuff and say forget it I just want to know how much I owe the school or you can go with what they had so they had 1400 for books 1452 for transportation and 2176 for miscellaneous. Maybe it's a more expensive area. Books here, they had 900, 950, and 600. And then um, at Tatooine, they had 1,000 for books. And then they didn't have a special transportation, but for miscellaneous, they had 1750. So now these were the costs of attendance that were listed on all of the different um, schools. Okay, so right now looking at this, you would say Alderaan's the most expensive, Coruscant's the cheapest, and Tatooine's kind of right in the middle. Our expected family contribution for each were zero, or we could put zero is how much we're hoping to have to pay out of our pocket, um, or you can put in, you know, what the FAFSA told you was yours or what you know you're planning to pay, and then go from there. So again, Throw in a chat if, if I've lost you, because we're going to have numbers and math and stuff like that, so it could be complicated. Federal Pell Grant that he qualified for is the same at every school. Um, the federal um, supplemental grant is a grant that you could get a need-based, um, and it comes from the colleges themselves, but it is federal money, but none of the schools offered them that. Uh, the MAP award, this is just if the schools are in Illinois, all three of these, and you live in Illinois yourself. So all of these schools are in Illinois and he own, um, and he lives in Illinois. So it, he's going to get the same. And again, this is from the FAFSA or the alternative app if you have done that. Uh, they did not have any other federal or state grants. So they're at zero. So all this should be the same. Again, this is the free money part. College grants and scholarships. At Alderaan, he was given an $8,275 grant from the college, and he was not given any at um, Coruscant, and he was given a $1,000 one at, at Tatooine. He was not given any other ones at these two schools, but except at Tatooine, he was given a $3,500 um, scholarship as well, Rubble Scholarship, um, Chancellor's Award, and the um, R2D2 one as well. Okay, federal work study. So again, so we if you stop here, 
at the this is the free money now if you stop here at the free money um, you could scroll down and see how much you would have to come up with out of pocket so even though alderon was 27 410 the most money it's actually the cheapest it's actually the cheapest uh, option that you have um, out of these three schools and coruscant which was the cheapest to begin with is actually the most expensive. So that's why it's really important to look at, um, at these letters, to compare them, to see what financial aid you're offered, uh, because the sticker price might show you at, at the highest, but once you compare these, it, it, could, be the, it could be the cheapest. Um, the only other thing you would do would be to throw in um, you know, loans and work study like that. So if you're like, you know what, I don't have 8,500 out of my pocket in my bank account, I need to take advantage of the other financial aid offered, then I can, I'm going to do the 2,000 of work study, hopefully that was offered at Alderaan. I'm going to take the 3,500 in subsidized loans that, that um, I have access to. I'm also going to take the $2,000 unsubsidized and again, um, you can see that what you would have to come, what he would have to come up with at um, all their own out of pocket with, you know, in order to go to class is still another thousand dollars. Whereas at Coruscant, it's thirty five hundred, and at Tatooine, it's thirty four fifty seven. So he's going to have to either get another job, he's going to have to look for some more scholarships. We can talk about. We'll talk about this a little bit later. Um, or he's going to have to change some of these other, um, figure out how he can lower some of these other costs, whether indirect costs or direct costs. Now, Alderaan is the cheapest for him, and he still has the highest amount of indirect um, costs. So assuming he can even lower those more, you know, this school really could be the, the best bet because he got the biggest, you know, grant and stuff like that. So I hope that makes sense. Hopefully everybody's following me on that. So this is a common thing. I'm going to go to Harper for first for two years because it's cheaper. Is this true? Is this always true? Is this never true? You know, we're going to take a look at an example. So here's an example of a student. We'll call him Peter Panther. And Peter has been admitted to Elmhurst College, which is now Elmhurst University. It's only 21 miles from here. So when he applied, he said, yeah, I want to live on campus. I want the housing plan, the meal plan, all that. This is an actual copy of a, of a former student's um, financial aid letter. And what I really like about Elmhurst is that they only list the direct costs. You can see in italics, they say costs for books, supplies, transportations aren't included. Of course, this is going to vary dep depending on your spending habits and circumstances and so on. But it's nice that they, they don't necessarily throw that in there um, because you're not paying that to Elmhurst. Of course, it also makes their school look like it doesn't cost as much. However, it's still at 47621 and this was a couple of years ago, um, with tuition, fees, housing, and board. This student, um, though, then received a ton of free financial aid, scholarships and grants. Remember, that's the free stuff. So the Dean Scholarship, 18000 for the year, American Dream Grant, Pell Grant, they did get that federal supplemental grant. The MAP grant, they got a housing award, so 2,500 bucks to live on campus, and then another random grant. All of that added up to $34,989 in free money. So even though the school is 47621 they got almost 35000 knocked off of that. So again, great deal. It doesn't happen for everybody. Um, some of this is need-based, but it's a private school. So again, they can put like that Elmhurst grant. How do you get that? No idea. They decided that the student deserved it. Um, what I like also is that they did not include the loans right now. Um, they, they, they just wanted to show you what it would be with the free money. So with the free money only, your family, this person's family would have to come up with $12,632. So you might be thinking that's a great deal, um, you know, off of forty-seven thousand plus. But man, that's still twelve thousand plus a year, times four years. I don't know. Probably might want to go to Harper first still. But let's take a let's just take a look at one option. This letter included 
living on campus. What if this student decided, you know, um, that they wanted to commute? It's only 21 miles away, shouldn't take that long. They still have to pay the same tuition and fees. <clears throat> they are going to get rid of that $10,500 um, meal plan and housing plan. So now their, their direct cost is just the tuition and fees. We're going to slightly lower their scholarship because, as I mentioned, they did get a housing grant. So you can't get, keep the housing grant if you don't live on campus. But when you subtract that, then now you're down to $4,566 in tuition and fees. If you multiply that by four, four years, the tuition and fees, assuming that it doesn't go up um, a whole lot, is a roughly $18,264 by commuting um, and just paying the tuition and fees after all that aid. And again, assuming you get that aid every year. So 18 by commuting to Elmhurst, you took an initial sticker, sticker price with room and board and everything of 47,000 plus for one year and got it down to 18,000 for four years by living at home. And of course, if you go to Harper, you're gonna live at home anyways. Now this doesn't include transportation. So cost of a car driving there, uh, parking pass, gas, insurance, you know, if you decide to buy lunch in the cafeteria. So there are gonna be more fees, but it may not be as much as it was to live there. So what if I wanna transfer, again, from, going back to our question, if transferring from Harper. Let's say Harper is free their first two years. Either you, you met it with Pell Grants, MAP Grants, maybe you're Harper Promise eligible. We're gonna pretend that Harper's free. So I'm gonna go free for two years and then I'm gonna transfer to Elmhurst after that. So how much are years three and four gonna cost me? Well, I'm hopefully tuition's the same and hasn't gone up a ton. I'm gonna commute still. So it's, there's my 37.55. Hopefully I'm still getting the same federal and state grants. Again, not everybody gets this, um, but it's a possibility. Um, the difference here is that the transfer scholarships are usually lower. So whereas, um, Peter had an $18,000 Dean scholarship and some other grants. You know, the maximum transfer scholarship, at least at the time, was only 16,000. They might be eligible for the American Dream for 2,000, so that's 18,000. So the tuition minus federal and state grants minus scholarships comes out to $8,067. Times the two years, your junior and senior year, let's say, at Elmhurst, you're paying $16,143 with the first two free and the second two at a little over eight. So factor myth, I'm going to Harper. I'm gonna to go to Harper first for two years because it's cheaper. Well, technically it is a fact, but Harper is gonna save you money. It's gonna save you a little over $2,000, but that's if you're awarded that maximum transfer scholarship. You've already been awarded the Dean scholarship or, or certain things this year already you have to make sure that you are eligible and, and get the maximum transfer scholarship down the road. And you do have to transfer all your credits to make sure that you are only taking two years uh, later. So you have to decide, and if this is your scenario, is it worth saving that $2,000 and going to Harper first? Or is it worth you know, maybe paying that extra amount in the long run? Um, but, but going straight to the four-year school, maybe commuting instead of living there, um, and, and just not having to worry about transfer and getting right into the campus field. So I just wanted to throw that example out there. I hope you followed. I know there was a lot of numbers and subtractions and stuff I was throwing out, but I want you to, to make sure you're looking at the long-term um, plan too. So quick recap here, what should you do? You should double check what's included in those lists. Is it a, a direct cost only like the Elmer's one? Do they have indirect on there also? Um, is the letter including, does the letter include loans um, and work study? Or like the Elmer's one, does it kind of keep it off and just sort of mention it? If you're offered scholarships or grants, do you know if they're one year only or are they renewable for every year? Um, so price out your options over the four years and then hopefully plan to graduate in four years, you know, or less, unless you're doing a specialized, you know, uh, bachelor, master's kind of program. Consider ways to lower those direct costs. So. If you live on campus, can you? What meal plan did they put on there? Did they give you three meals a day, seven days a week? You know, twenty-one meals a week. Are you really going to eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner um, every single day? 
you may do that now, but most college kids will probably tell you that they sleep in and they just go straight to class. And before they know it, it's lunch. Maybe they grab the pop tart or something. So they're not really eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day. You know, and you decide to go out with your friends for dinner on Saturday night. You know, you're not even eating in, in the plan. You're just wasting your money. Housing options, you know, did you put it in as a double or a single? The more people to the room, the lower the cost usually. Can you move to it? Uh, can you choose a dorm that's cheaper? Maybe there's one that's farther off. Maybe it's older. Maybe it's, I don't know, doesn't have air conditioning or something like that. Um, maybe that's so maybe the cost is lower. And then can you commute? Can you commute and save that $10,000-ish a year um, and save that for something else like your tuition? Make sure to compare them all equally. So use that kind of website where you are, um, you know, comparing things apples to apples in the same row. And then finally, how do you fill the gap then? If you put in all the free money you're eligible for and there's still money, there's still money you owe left, how do you fill that? You, you know, do you consider loans? Sometimes people are like, no, no, student loan debt will cripple me for life. Well, if you do it, properly it should it's a means to an end it's a means to getting that degree to make more money to go on with your career um, of course if you you know borrow you know huge amounts you, you could be in trouble so it's not always evil you just got to be very very careful of course you could get a job or two and save up some money and then finally of course look for scholarships scholarships of course are free money um, you guys know that i'm assuming by now you don't have to pay it back uh, we've had scholarship workshops. Um, you look in Naviance, look on the college's website. I tweet a lot of them out on our Life After Hersey Twitter. Career cruising you can use. All of these different things are in the college application guide under scholarships. So you can look there. This is not a great resource. Um, she sends out emails. But also one thing, don't forget about year two, three, and four. You might have a gap of $6,000, $10,000 freshman year, and you apply to every local scholarship in Naviance, and you get all of them, and it adds up to $10,000, and you're like, yes, I am covered everything for freshman year. What happens sophomore year? What if those scholarships are just one and done, and you can't fill that $10,000 gap the next year? Are you going to be able to stay at that school? Or... Um, what are you going to have to do? So just keep in mind all four years. And then there's, of course, money out there. Um, so you just have to put in the effort to get it. I know it's a pain. Um, <clears throat> I'm not going to talk much more about scholarships right now, but it, there is money out there. So it's a good idea once you get these letters to review them, figure out how much you have left and get going on those scholarships so that you can fill those gaps with, uh, with free money. So hopefully that, um, hopefully that helps you in this. Um, I know that was a lot um, and a lot of examples that maybe went fast, but I just want to do a quick rundown um, on how financial aid letters could look, what they include, and hopefully how to better understand them. For more frequent reminders, updates, resources, and more, please follow us on social media at Life After Hersey and subscribe to my YouTube page.